five again or ten or a hundred or uh, several hundred or several thousand. It just simply means it's a, it's a commercial transaction. It's a business to business transaction, not like a person to person transaction, which is usually what a house is or a piece of real estate. Usually a person is buying it from a person. This is a company selling an asset uh, to another company on a contract. A lot different. Um, we buy them in bulk. We use quick claims to buy them because they want to transfer them from their name to ours. So once we've come to an agreement on contracts, we buy them as is, um, where is, as is all across the entire country. Wherever a bank has a footprint, that's where they'll have houses. So that's where they'll be. So they'll sell off these houses at whatever price that we negotiate with them. And that's the key, trying to buy these properties for as cheap as we possibly can. Once we've negotiated those deals, we'll turn around and usually the same day, we'll sign a contract with those institutions. They'll sign, we'll sign, so they'll agree to sell to us, we'll agree to buy, uh, say, 100 houses, and they'll, then we'll turn around and we'll fund that very same day. So when they, once we negotiate the deal, and they say, yep, you got it, usually it's an hour or two or three we're wiring money, not a long time. Um, it takes a lot of people, they'll spend, you'll spend two months buying one house to live in. We're not buying it to live in, we're it's simply an investment for us, so we might buy a hundred houses in an afternoon, in two hours. We got the phone call, we looked at it, okay, this is what we'll do, um, we'll pay you this, we like the contract, they like the contract, we all sign, we wire our money, it's a done deal, just like that. Happens quite often. Uh, the property goes into a land trust after you guys purchase it, or is it going into a land trust once you purchase it from the bank or when you sell it to Are you putting the hand on the slide? No, no, I'm just... I haven't even mentioned land trust yet, and you're asking questions about land trust. <laughs> let me get there, then let me see if we get there. We actually, once we buy the property, we execute the contracts, and then the bank, once we've paid them for it, they're going to turn around and ask us. They're going to say, what name would you like these to be placed in? That's called vesting. They're going to know, now that you bought this thing from us, and we're going to move them to you in quick claim deeds, what name do you want on the title? That's where we create land trusts. We will go and create our own individual land trust. One land trust for each property. So in this example, we're buying 100 uh, homes. We'll create 100 land trusts and we'll instruct the bank or institution to move it from their ownership into the land trust ownership directly. So it'll move straight from there into the land trust. We do that to help limit our liability and also to make it easy to move property around from place to place. So land trust is a very commonly used uh, instrument. Does that answer your question? Okay. So um, we use land trusts again for privacy and protection to help to limit our liability. But also uh, we hold the, um, we personally hold all the beneficial interest of each trust we have in, in an LLC. It kind of gives us two layers of protection when we're buying those on the front end. So we move it directly from the bank into a land trust. There's another thing about this. Uh, the point in bulk is, is why it's different. One of the things that's different is you don't have a lot of time to, you know, do title searches and due diligence and, and go through escrow companies and take all that time. It sometimes takes 30 or 60 days. We don't do that with ours. Again, our packages can close sometimes in a matter of a couple hours, um, uh, usually not any longer than a day or two. That's a very long time in this business is two days. If it's worth buying, it's gone way before uh, 24 hours are up. So when it, when the, you got to strike when the iron's hot in this business. All right. One more question. Yes. So how do you ensure that it's a clean title, that there no... Let me get through it and then... Oh, okay. Then, okay, all right. So now, um, once we've bought these properties, we want to know uh, what to do with them. So what do we want to do with them? Just like the bank, we want to sell them, we want to spin up the scotto for as much as we can, as, quick as quickly as we can. And we've done that through a, a proven time-tested established system. We've got a very complete system that I'm going to talk about for the next few minutes that goes through the process of moving this from a REO or an unwanted asset, basically a liability on the bank balance sheet, back into a very usable end user product. So now it's a house again, basically. But there's a process to convert it from that to this. Uh, it's not automatically good uh, out of the gate. You are buying a, a potentially fuzzy product. So don't forget to register and look at these properties at the end. Now let's talk about system. The first thing we do, we don't have the opportunity to um, do any kind of due diligence before we purchase them. But it would be uh, not prudent for us to do that uh, after we buy them. So we're going to 
buy them first and then do the information, which in real estate, traditionally what you do is you do all this research before and then you would um, buy it after you've done the real estate, I mean the research. The problem with that in our arena is you never buy anything, number one, if you don't get that opportunity because you got to remember we're buying this stuff for pennies on the dollar. And that's the key here is we make our money when we buy. You know, I was telling uh, the group earlier today, they were talking about, uh, we were talking about, uh, and I can't remember who actually said this, but I swear it might have been Donald Trump that actually first said it. Um, but it's about 30 years ago, and someone changed the mantra for real estate to what's the first rule in real estate? Location, Lo location, 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 right? That's what everybody believes. Well, that's crazy. Um, the, all before that, the first rule of real estate had been you make your money when you buy, right? You make your money when you buy. You ever heard of that? If you ever had a grandpa that bought some land or some dirt or something, those guys always said, you make your money when you buy. You buy this over here, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, it will be worth more money. So you've got to negotiate a great deal on the front end. You've got to buy it right. You buy it right, you get options. You get lots of opportunity. You get lots of different options, lots of different things you can do. If you, all the due diligence in the world, you get in a bad deal or you have limited options, it's not a good place to be in. I, mean, I usually make my worst mistakes when I only have one option to make. But when I've got a dozen options I can do and I can, I can make maneuver the deal, I make a lot better choices. Those choices help me make better decisions. Those better decisions lead to better deals, basically, because I have options. So um, we don't have the opportunity to negotiate all this up front. So it's exactly the opposite of buying one house. But we do know that we've had the opportunity to buy houses maybe at a dime on the dollar, or 15 cents on the dollar, or 8 cents on the dollar, whatever it is, we bought them relatively inexpensive to what they were before. So we want to take our chances and hope that we have bought a good batch. Now that we own them, we need to verify that. Now that we own them. The difference is in bulk buying, you don't get the opportunity to do it prior to purchase, you do it after you purchase, but you still do the same stuff. So we have an in-house title company. Uh, we had a title company in Florida for a long time. We've got a title agent, a very seasoned title agent. She actually does all of our preliminary title reports. So we're going to pull all those title reports on every house we buy after we buy it in-house. We're going to tell us things that about that property, like what are the previous owners, what are the previous mortgages, what are the previous sales price, what taxes, liens, levies, judgments, utilities are owned on the prop uh, owed on the properties. It's the same thing that any attorney or escrow company would do. We're just doing it in-house. The difference is, is how do you ensure a clear title? Well, all the thing is, is you got to pay that stuff. That's all a title company does. They pull up a preliminary title report. They figure out what's owed on it. They tell you how much it is. You write them a check. They pay you get your check. Put it in an escrow account. Pay that stuff off and go, hey, clean title. Uh, so the only thing that is, it really is to get a clean title. Just pay everything that's owed on it. But you got to know what that is first. And we do the exact same process as a any title company or attorney would use. We're going to, to pull a preliminary title report on that. So now that we've done that preliminary title report, we know some of this data, then we're also going to visit each and every property. That's another thing that we do. Um, we need to know what they look like. We need to know what the condition is, because all the preliminary title reports in the world aren't going to help you as far as what's the condition of the house. You know, photos can do one part, but they can't tell you. They're not as good as walking through the property. And so wherever they are, we send out travel teams to go out. They're going to inspect, personally inspect each home. They're going to do a 21-point home inspection. Talk about how many bedrooms it's got, bathrooms it's got, look at the electrical, look at the plumbing, look at the roof, look at the windows, look at the doors, look at the flooring, look at all that stuff. We're also going to take pictures inside and outside of the property. They're going to secure the property with lockbox and codes. They're also going to post a for sale sign on the property with a local number to that area. And all of those local numbers ring to North Carolina to our office. So they're going to do all of that. They're going to take all of that information that we now know after the fact. They're going to post it on our website at myplace.us. So each house gets put on there and each all this information that we gather from this, from the preliminary title report and from the home inspections gets placed on my place. Here are some of the examples of what some of the houses look like. You know, some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger, um, some of them are brick and some are vinyl. They're just different. Uh, and the reason I show you this is to show you an example or sample listings of what they are. Some of them are, are real dogs, just to be honest with you. Banks sell off real dogs. Some of them will be vacant lots. We'll get 2 or 3%. So a couple out of 100 will just be blank land. There used to be a house there, maybe caught on fire, burnt down, they scraped it, and we get a lot. We'll get a lot. Sometimes we'll get some junk houses. 
Sometimes we get some really nice houses. But most of the time, about 80 to 85% of the time, you're going to get that stuff right in the middle of the road. It's a great house. Things 